36 counties in the state of Oregon. Today, 22 of these counties have something in common. Marion County is not one of them. <laughs> Welcome to People, Places, and Politics. I'm Patty Milne. My guest today is Derek Godwin, the Regional Administrator, Oregon State University Extension Service. And Derek, you can tell us what it is that Marion County is missing out on that 22 of our 36 counties have. Yeah, that's What is right. it? What's going on? So they're missing out on an extension service district. And so. why is that important? <laughs> why do we, we have, yeah. we have extension services. We do. So yeah. why is having a district um, beneficial? Yeah, so there's several parts of that, Patty. Uh, one is is that extension services are a dedicated source of funds mm -hmm. just for extension within that county. And then also it's permanent. Mm -hmm. So the beauty of this is that it secures extension service in the counties, programs like 4-H mm -hmm. and Master Gardeners and Agriculture uh, forever. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, pretty hard to come by these days. And the reason, I'm going to jump ahead just a bit here. I know, being a former Marion County Commissioner, the uh, state funding mm -hmm. uh, over the years continued to dwindle. And as mm -hmm. we all know, there are more and more fights over where state funds ought to go. Mm -hmm. Marion County government has um, supported extension services. But yeah. so, Having a tax base would mean we don't have to struggle and hope for, or go to the <laughs> go to the legislature and lobby for dollars. Yeah. Is that what this is going to do? Well, uh, kind of yes and no. Uh, maybe I could give you just a little bit of mm -hmm. history of the funding because I think that'll help dis d explain it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, extension started in Oregon back in 1911, and mm -hmm. kind of coincidentally, it started in Marion County. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the first extension agent. And how that funding got started was the local chamber of commerce got mm -hmm. with the county, Marion County, and provided funding for an office space, some support staff, and essentially that the money it would take to host an agent, a county mm -hmm. agent, mm -hmm. that was provided by OSU. Uh, and that first agent, Luther Chapin, folks may know the Chapin family. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they had a, a farm up here in North Marion County. Uh, anyway, so that money for Luther was provided by uh, state funds. And so what happened is you have state funding providing a person, a, a, an agent, mm -hmm. that is placed out in the counties, you know, bringing the university to the communities. That's the whole mission here. And, uh, and then the county providing that support. Mm -hmm. Well, and then in 1914, this became a national mm -hmm. act or, or, mm -hmm. or national law, and they created extension services all throughout the United States, and that provided the federal funding. So the point here is, I get back to, is that state and federal dollars for many, well, 100 years, mm -hmm. uh, have been providing the bulk of funding mm -hmm. for agents that are in the communities. And what's happened over that time, and really much more recently, uh, the state and federal dollars have not been, been keeping up in order to provide these mm -hmm. services. So back to the county, the beauty of the service district is that it provides that local source that's permanent, mm -hmm. and in some cases provides some money that invests locally specific so that we are certain to have 4-H in the mm -hmm. county, for example. Mm -hmm. We are certain to provide services to ag businesses mm -hmm. and family woodland owner businesses and master gardeners and master food preservers. There are these core programs and services that we'll always have if this gets created. And as a lot of people viewing this program probably know, some may not, but agriculture is Marion County's number one industry. Mm. So this has a huge economic impact. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about that? Sure, yeah, yeah, sure can. So, uh, so, so one factor or one uh, statistics that mm -hmm. people like to point to in agriculture mm -hmm. is what we call gross farm sales. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like you know, the cost of a product as it leaves the farm. Well, it's a common way of comparing county by county and region by region, you know, throughout the United States. Mm -hmm. Well, so Marion County is the tops in gross farm sales. To give you an idea, it was 600, about 640 million back in 2012. Mm -hmm. And so I don't have the current data, yeah. but it's been increasing since then. But, and Marion County is the leader in that, and by far, because 
the, the second and third place counties are really more in the mid 450 or so range. Mm -hmm. So what that, I guess the point being is that agriculture is big. It it's, brings a lot of dollars into local area. And then on top of that, these dollars uh, multiply. You know, folks often talk about the multiplication factor, how mm -hmm. many times dollars turn over mm -hmm. a, in a community or in a, in a county. In agriculture, you usually look at a two to three factor. Uh, and then if you have value added crops like wine grapes, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's been a booming industry. <laughs> uh, so that is a value added product that then is a much higher rate as I think I've heard eight to 10 being a factor. Wow. So yeah, so it's it's not just it's not just business that's on the farm. You know, these are mm -hmm. uh, they help, of course, in that and families, but it also is the accountants and the banks and and um, the tax advisors and the equipment uh, mm -hmm. um, equipment supply places. I mean, it's really just a whole host of things that affect the economy. Oh, food and beverage, you know, is, mm -hmm. a, is another huge mm -hmm. part of the area. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, it's a big thing. I heard a, a statistic from Oregon Department of Ag that said across the state, one in every um, one in every jobs in the state is related to agriculture. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know that here, those local area, it's even more than that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, especially it's our huge. small communities around the county, where the community is still ag based. I live in oh, Woodburn, yeah. and it's very much that way. Oh, yeah. uh, Staten, go up the canyon, and and yeah. lots and and on and on yeah. and on. It is a huge, a huge yeah. part of our local economy. Yeah. So, and then we talk about kids. Yeah. <laughs> 4-H, and yeah. what would happen? What has been? Let's give a little background sure. first. What's been happening with 4-H and? The yeah. programs for the kids. Well, uh, you know, so a lot of people may not realize this about 4-H. So 4-H started even before extension. Uh -huh. It started, <laughs> I think it was 1904, 05. The whole idea of 4-H is that you're teaching life skills or those soft skills that employers uh -huh. talk about. Uh -huh. uh, you're teaching those life skills through some kind of project. And so people often think of, well, raising an animal. Uh, so you're raising, say, a livestock um, or an animal throughout the year and then you go and show it at, mm -hmm. the, at the fair. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a common understanding of 4-H. And what that does is it's providing many skills all throughout the year um, as, as well as these soft life skills from communication and uh, community service, so forth. So anyway, so, so that's the background of 4-H. It's many different programs now. It's not just for the rural kids. Mm -hmm. yeah, as a matter of fact, we serve Many uh, our largest program is in rural. Er I mean, in urban areas, urban. The cities. Uh -huh. Yeah, such as programs such. Um, as. Well, so the fastest growing area mm -hmm. is in our after-school programs like mm -hmm. robotics. Um, uh -huh. Also, our camps. We put out camps that are held like at the 4-H camp, and it'll fill up within mm -hmm. a day for some parts mm -hmm. of it, and multiple days. Um, so it's this after-school and short-term projects. Other big ones have been um, shooting sports, you know, like archery and riflery. Uh, certainly, animals are, but uh, say dogs have yes. been, yeah, yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> teaching uh, uh, dogs and training. Um, so many, many things there. Um, so, so back to kind of what's been happening. So what what happens is that 4-H is a very community-based program. It's a most of it is around clubs, and and so whenever it's all throughout the counties. Uh, the best way to reach them is through multiple um, staff that train volunteers mm -hmm. to then deliver the program. Mm -hmm. So it's volunteer based. And what's been happening over the years is that we've lost a lot of these positions and so we rely more and more heavily on volunteers but we have less trainers, you know, less mm -hmm. leaders mm -hmm. to, to, mm -hmm. to bring that out. And then that's, that doesn't help the program for sure. Yeah. And then there are um, some other programs such as Master Gardeners. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Extension is known for training the trainer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we have many programs where we're training volunteers that then serve the community. So 4-H, one of the largest. Second one is Master Gardeners, where our volunteers get trained through a series of courses, and then they serve the community by answering questions, or they put on workshops, mm -hmm. or the big thing lately has been community gardens. Yes. I think in Salem mm -hmm. and Kaiser, there's over 50 some odd community gardens where master gardeners are helping. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's it's that community service and the community help that, that is a big component. Our, um, so I, I just found out the, uh, the other day we were looking at our numbers from 2014 and we had in volunteers 
our volunteers recorded uh, a little over 55,000 hours. Wow. So, it, it, and if you look at the value of that, the state says, you know, you could use like a $20 per hour cost, but essentially over a million dollars in value, mm -hmm. or if in people, it's about 27 mm -hmm. full-time folks. So. Wow. Yes, wow. that's pretty neat. So we're doing, we're reaching the community in, uh, through these volunteers are fantastic. So other programs that we didn't touch on yet? Yeah, so so what I usually like to say is agriculture is our largest. We have people that are scattered all around working with ag businesses. Uh, 4-H, Master Gardener, uh, our third. Uh, fourth one is what we call family community health. In the past, it was some folks call it like home economics. Mm -hmm. So this is mm -hmm. where- That was you, back in the dark I ages. Back in the day, right? <laughs> well, it's a very popular thing uh -huh. now. So in particular, food, um, uh -huh. the food preservation mm -hmm. program, Master Food Preservers, uh, teaching people how to take their local products mm -hmm. or the healthy products and preserve them, but also how to eat nutritiously and how to take care of yourself and family. That's a big part of family community health. And then the fifth uh, area is wo Master Woodland Manager or our Woodland Owner Program, mm -hmm. where we focus on families that own woodlands that either want to grow trees for products or maybe it's for recreation or for wildlife enhancement. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's been around for many years and that's also a growing area. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, of course, we know Christmas trees, right? Yes, so Christmas trees yes. are big very here in big Marion here County. Very big here in Marion County, and, yes. uh, and that's an area our forestry program helps with them. Good. Yeah. Let, let's move um, uh, now to this um, ballot measure itself. Uh, yeah. Am I using the correct terms? Yes. Yeah, yeah. um, don't want to confuse people. Yeah. Um, the, the caption is Establish Marion County Extension and 4-H Service District. Talk a little bit then about what, let's talk the money, <laughs> the yeah, money part of this. Sure. It, um, uh, here on, on this, and I pulled this off of the Marion County mm -hmm. um, Clerk's um, website. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. district would implement a maximum rate of uh, the five cents per thousand assessed value. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. So what does that mean uh, to the average homeowner? Yeah. So this is what people really want right, to know. What's right. this going to yeah. cost me? What is it going to cost me? Exactly. The value is there, yeah. but what will it cost? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what the assessor has told us is that the average assessed value for a home in Marion County is around 155000 So mm -hmm. if we say 160000 then that homeowner, assuming the five cents is levied, um, that would be roughly $8 per year. So that's, that's the average uh, for people that own mm -hmm. you know, homes, pay the, the real estate tax. Um, so that's the cost. Uh, it is, you know, what, what commonly comes up is that, is this like a five-year thing or is, you know, mm -hmm. does it have to be renewed? Um, and no, it's, it's every year the commissioners as the board for this district, mm -hmm. you know, they decide how much to levy up to that five cents. It never, now, can and, never be higher. Say that again, yeah. because people will read this and automatically think that's what we're spending. Yeah, so, so it again. can never go higher than five cents. Okay. Can never, yeah. And that's a common misperception that people as well, once they start, you know, it's going to keep going up. Mm -hmm. But no, it's by law. It's that. Okay. Uh, and the other thing, Patty, is I would say is by law, this is money that serves local. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to campus and be used in other positions or any other place. It's, it has to stay local. And that's one of the key reasons why a lot of folks are behind this. Okay. Yeah. And what else? Um, it can't, um, it won't go to the county where it could be diverted right, elsewhere. Diverted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're pointing out some, some good points there is that it's a dedicated source mm -hmm. of funds. Mm -hmm. and. While so the commissioners uh, right now or our board, you know, mm -hmm. uh, for extension, and they would continue to be even as a service district. So it's different than many of the other common service districts that people hear of. It's not necessarily a whole new form of government, a new board, and uh, and, and that it's, it's the same commissioners. And by law, this has to be used on extension, education, and those services here in the county. So, um, 
That's eight dollars for the average house, roughly a hundred and sixty thousand dollar assessed value. Correct. Yes. That's a bargain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bargain. Yeah. You talked about people being um, supportive of this. Who's yeah. who's supporting it? Let Let's just talk about who's supporting. Yeah. It. Well, so you would think so. Uh, commonly, it's it's our clientele that we serve now, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. But um, there are many organizations that have supported. So in particular, the Chambers of Commerce, mm -hmm. uh, the Salem Chamber of Commerce and Kaiser Chamber of Commerce have, have both come out in support. And they actually will have a, a, a voter pamphlet statement or, mm -hmm. or a statement in the voters mm -hmm. pamphlet uh, for that. Um, let me, I, I guess I should back up and say, you know, another part of this whole process that I didn't even mention is that even to be on the ballot, we had to go to every city within the county. Yes. And you know, Marion County yes. is the most cities, right? 20 <laughs> cities. And so you talk about who's who's behind this. So the cities all agreed to be part of the district mm -hmm. should this pass by the voters. Mm -hmm. So that's that was huge. And then more currently, of course, the Chambers of Commerce. Um, we have many ag businesses that are, of course, behind it, because that's a big mm -hmm. thing. Um, uh, certainly a lot of families yeah, in particular because they see extension as uh, as providing that community-based education and, and to help out. Um, the, we work a lot with Marion Polk Food Share mm -hmm. and so many people think Marion Polk Food Share is their mission to end hunger but they think of food boxes. Well if you know more about Marion Polk Food Share they actually <laughs> try to build business and they mm -hmm. try to end hunger mm -hmm. And so Extension has helped with uh, the business side. We've mm -hmm. helped with uh, them with growing quinoa for their better burger. Mm -hmm. uh, we've helped with their nutrition side of how to make sure that each person getting a food box, it's nutritious, mm -hmm. nutrition-based. And then we've also helped with some of their other programs like the youth farm. Mm -hmm. So they, the youth uh, are training, uh, getting trained to how to work a farm mm -hmm. and they grow uh, vegetables that they then sell at the farmer's market like a business mm -hmm. uh, or through subscriptions. And then they also, some of that gives back to, uh, of course, the food pantries and local as well. So anyway, so I, I mentioned Marion Polk Food Share is, is a big partner Good. as well. Good. And um, a little bit about the process, just briefly, of how did how did this come to be on yeah. on the ballot in this um, special election, yeah, special wow. district election? Yeah. So as you can imagine, the, there's a group of volunteers that have been working on this for some time, actually for for many years. We've, We've talked about this possibility, for quite but some more, time. yeah, yeah. But more recently, <laughs> it, be, it became a reality. Mm -hmm. And what they did is, they came up with three chief petitioners. So you talk about supporters: mm -hmm. uh, Jim Murno with Willamette Valley Vineyards, mm -hmm. Bob Zelinsky of Scenic Valley Farms, mm -hmm. and Kara Fisher that was mm -hmm. formerly with Association mm -hmm. of Oregon Counties. Uh, the three of them were chief petitioners and. They started this with collecting signatures and, and helping go to all the cities. And as they were going through that process, there was so much support mm -hmm. and in gathering signatures that uh, <coughs> they went back to the commissioners and, and the commissioners decided that, you know, another way to put this on the ballot is, is to refer it to mm -hmm. the voters. And uh, as you know, you're a commissioner. Uh, that is not a easy decision. And I think they saw that they, it, it has so much support is that why are, are we sit, spending all these resources to, to go through these steps? Why don't we put it on the ballot? And so uh, they held several hearings. Uh, they had testimony from community members at, at multiple hearings. And then ultimately they submitted the documentation as, as you downloaded there mm -hmm. to be in the, the May election. Yes. So that's the, the overview Great. of it. Great. I want to um, mention some dates um, relative to elections um, before we wrap up with some other important yeah. comments that I know you want to make. May 19th is Election Day. The um, ballots, um, let me see, I wrote down, I pulled off of the um, elections website here. Uh, roughly, the, well, the week of um, April 20th, um, that's the first day mm -hmm. that the ballots will be mailed out of state. We do have um, residents in Oregon who happen to be out of state for a variety of reasons, such mm -hmm. as um, service people. 
The deadline to register for this election is mm -hmm. April 28th, mm -hmm. and then the bulk of the ballots will go out on the 29th. So um, please be sure to watch for your ballot and, and um, mark it and return it. There are several other things on the ballot that, on that particular ballot as well. But mm -hmm. What else? A couple of things here, Derek, that you'd yeah. really like to touch on with the couple of sure, minutes we have sure. left. Well, one thing, and you just mentioned it, Patty, mm -hmm. and that is, can, do you know how many folks actually usually turn out to vote in these special elections? No. Not many. Not right? many. So I think it's worth repeating for folks to vote, you know, to exercise that. So that's one thing. There's usually a pretty low percentage of folks turning out. So that's, that's one thing as, as a reminder. You know, I, I think a few take home messages here for extension, you know, even <coughs> though you know, we've been around for many years, it, the mission is still the same, and that is that it's uh, extending knowledge from mm -hmm. the university out to the communities in order to, to change lives. Mm -hmm. So it's meant that we're providing skills, providing information to help people sort of help themselves, so to speak. And, uh, and I, I think that's, that, that holds true today, even though it's been around for over 100 years. So that's key. The other key is that this is helping local families. Mm -hmm. You know, it's local funding. It's it's something that stays here. There's not a, a cut off the top that the university takes or that the county takes or diverts to some other mm -hmm. thing. You mm -hmm. know, it's it's all stays here for the programs. And I think that's you know that's the beauty of extension. Um, I started the program by uh, mentioning that 22 other counties have extension service, yeah. special districts. Right. What have you learned about um, the benefits of those that really um, mm. encouraged you to pursue this? Yeah, well, <laughs> I serve a region. I, I serve this five county region, mm -hmm. and within just my five counties, Lynn and uh, Polk, and Yamhill County all have service districts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I tell you, as, as a person that's in, in charge of providing services in the county, it's just night and day from what mm -hmm. they've had in the past. Mm -hmm. Now, Yamhill's been around for, for many years, but Lynn and Polk were essentially heading down a path where they were gonna lose their funding, and it's just, it was the county uh, struggles mm -hmm. there. And the service district came in and had support, and it, it brought back extension, it even added some to where they could provide more services mm -hmm. to the community. And so just that, that security and the investment locally has is, is just been, mm -hmm. it's been huge. Uh, and so then on a statewide level, we've really around the state, it's becoming a, a situation of the haves and have nots. I mean, the counties that have local funding and have that support, they're the ones that are receiving more of the services, it, it, it leverages extension dollars leverage those state and federal dollars and of course volunteers right mm, yes, and so and the more that you have locally the more that you can leverage to, to do that and so that's secure funding the leveraging uh, for those dollars and of course more more services yeah so, so what um I, I really hesitate to ask this next question, but uh, I have to. You've never I think hesitated <laughs> in the past, right? Because <laughs> I think people watching yeah. this would say, so if it were not to pass, mm -hmm. what happens? Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, a tough, it's a tough question. I mean, obviously, the commissioners, you know, they're, they're a board, so, so mm -hmm. they decide mm -hmm. what, what happens. You know, right now, our funding is on general funds, and as mm -hmm. you remember, mm -hmm. um, it's a challenge. You know, there's always, high priority things and, and uh, you know, how you invest that. The commissioners have been dedicated that it will not be cut. As a matter of fact, they have said, they, their promise has been, as the service district gets created, they have said that the money is planned to continue. Mm -hmm. So that, that's really key because that has not been the case in many counties. They've, they've said new money, you know, we're, we're there. But the commissioners, as you know, they're, they're very invested in this. They're mm -hmm. very supportive, and they do not uh, want to stop that investment. So let's so. back up to that point again. Yeah. Um, creating this special district mm -hmm. with its own funding, mm -hmm. if that happens, if the voters, <laughs> if the voters support it, yeah. will not affect the monies that the county, Marion County government, currently allocates to that's, extension. That's correct. That's That's okay. been the commissioners. That's been what they yeah. have, have said this whole mm -hmm. time. And uh, and as you can imagine, that, that's been pretty critical because 
the the public uh, the folks don't want um, they don't like the idea of the commissioners potentially using this as some other way to to stop right. that commitment. Well, I That's think it's important um, that people know that because, and this goes before I left the county, um, yeah. this discussion was was um, taking place. It, it's the commitment, but also. Yeah. Um, when you look at, um, where was it here, um, the five cents per thousand, um, again, on a, on a $160,000 home, which is an average value in the Salem or Marion County area, $8. Yeah. It's not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Patty, you mentioned that um, how mu oftentimes people ask, well, how much is the levy in other places, uh -huh. other counties? Well, five cents is, is really low. Mm -hmm. you know, so this is a pretty conservative amount. If you look at the other county, Polk is seven and a half cents. Lynn County is seven cents. Some kind of Klamath is going up for this, and I believe they're at 10, mm -hmm. 10 cents. Mm -hmm. So you know, as you look at, at five cents, it's the same as Clackamas. So Clackamas mm -hmm. was the closest one with somewhat similar population as Marion, and theirs is five cents. And so uh, I think the commissioners felt like it was a conservative amount, it was a reasonable amount, mm -hmm. you know, to ask. And in a sense, then the commissioners yeah. have the skin in the game as well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> if we could say that. Yes, yes, um, they do, they do. So, uh, again, we're going to have to um, uh, close here in just mm -hmm. a moment. Uh, let people know who to contact, mm. uh, <laughs> phone numbers, email, sure. what um, website. Sure, sure. Where, where do we so look? So I have two things. You know, one thing I've talked a lot about the volunteers. So the volunteer group is called Citizens for Marion County Extension, mm -hmm. CMCE. Mm -hmm. They do have a PAC, Political Action Committee. And so if you're looking at websites, they are at cmcepac.com. So that's the, the political side, the volunteer side, and you can find out what they're doing. As far as extension and us, we are at extension.oregonstate.edu forward slash Marion. So extension.oregonstate.edu forward slash Marion. And that'll get you to our office. And of course we have, uh, we just moved our extension office. Maybe I should say this, we're, we're in the Farm Bureau building. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a beautiful building out on the corner in Salem, corner of Capitol and Gaines. So mm -hmm. new office, we're getting settled in there. Uh, coming out to, to see us you know, during the week. Uh, so those those two ways of finding our address and website and of course our phone numbers to give us a call. Good, good. So again, yeah. May 19th, um, and I would, I would encourage you to vote for this um, uh, special district. And uh, if you have any questions, again, you can um, go to that um, contact information that I think will be on the bottom of the screen there then. And yeah. uh, thank you, Derek, for being my guest. Thank you, Patty. It was and, a lot of fun. Uh, good. Enjoy so it. So good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Take care.